far from it for me to discourage anyone who wants to leave this country. Uh, please wait, wait and listen to me. To discourage anyone who wants to live in search of greener pastures, education, healthcare, what have you. And the reason why I say far from it from me, I lived outside this country for 15 years. And I returned. Yes, I went uh, to study and then walked and then came back. So if you go by that, and this country was pretty bad at that time. It was the military era. But I would say to them that, and by the way, everything that they, they, they fought for, the five points, absolutely laudable. And on our part, in Ekiti State, and I believe even the federal government, they acknowledged that those issues of police brutality that the young ones raised had to be addressed. And that's what has led to some of the tribunals that have been sitting across the country. But I agree with you that some of them might have been left with a feeling of despondency or frustration if the end goal they were looking for in the process of pushing for that agenda on police brutality, if it goes beyond just dealing with police brutality to regime change. Some might have been frustrated that he never got to regime change yeah. and they never got the, yeah. uh, the, the, the result that they wanted out of that. But even if your search is for regime change in a democracy, there's only one way for, the, for regime change in a democracy. You walk towards it, another election is going to come. If you don't like what APC is doing, organize. Stop agonizing. <laughs> organize against the party. Link up with others who are organizing. And then kick the boss of APC out of office. And put people that you think would do better. Not create a situation of anarchy because those who hijack the good intention of the leadership of NSAS, that's what they were about. They wanted to just run the country amok in the process of messing up the really well-intentioned agenda that had been set by those who are uh, behind it. So what I'm saying in essence is I would urge and we have a duty also of mentorship to younger people to say to them that sometimes you don't always get what you push for. But that does not necessarily suggest that that is the end of the road. You have a way in which you keep knocking on the door, banging it, and inevitably it will open. How long it opens for, how far you have to wait before it opens, will depend on your capacity to organize alongside people who also share your vision of transformation. Uh, and uh, at the risk of sounding immodest, that's what got some of us into politics. We believe that another Nigeria is possible, a better Nigeria is possible, and we should not stand at the sidelines in pushing for that Nigeria of our dreams. We're not there yet, but that does not mean we'll give up. But organizing is not just political organizing. You can organize in other spheres in uh, society. Because really, leadership is not title, it's not His Excellency, it's not the office. Leadership is influence. Pastor Podu is far more influential than many of us who are in political office. Yes. And that's how you need to see the whole idea of transforming this country. First, don't succumb to 
despondency. There's a lot to ail in this country. There's a lot to frustrate. There's a lot to make you want to give up and pick that visa and go to Canada. I know it's a popular destination, Canada. But you know what? There's also a glass ceiling in Canada. Mm. When you get to the top of it, you will now discover that there's a glass ceiling in Canada. This is the place where there is no glass ceiling. Let's all work towards making it a better place. The platform is powered by the Covenant Nation.